Hey, this is John Carlos, and I'm here with a look at the NECA Ultimate Action Figure of Megan from the movie Megan. This is a regular release, but it is getting an early release at Target as part of their Fall Geek Out. You know, right out of the packaging, the first thing I notice is like how easy this is uh, for NECA to make a figure of, like just by design. Like, aside from her dress, which is like an original sculpt, uh, you know, her legs are just like smooth plastic legs because like in the movie, she's just wearing like leggings. Same thing with the sleeves. They're very modest. There's not a lot of like complicated new things to sculpt. And it still totally looks like her, but I just think from a toy making perspective, what an easy gig. You're essentially just making new heads and, a, and a, an accurate torso. And speaking of the torso, I think they did a great job with her, her big bow, her big fancy like bow tie thing that she has. The flow of her outfit and the little way it wrinkles in the front looks good. Like it, it really does read like her outfit. The, the striping on the, uh, the sleeves look good. I'm curious if the, uh, yeah, if, if that's going to flake off. And as usual, it, it, it is. That's usually what happens when they paint that little elbow joint right in there. Um, yeah, her legs look good. You know, with that little hinge swivel at the uh, behind the knee, the little little knee flap. Uh, paint on the shoes look good. With that little strap going across the top. That's a nice touch. And then we get this head, uh, the one of three. And I really, really like this. This is my favorite head, I think, of the three. The flow of the hair is nice where it meets the shoulder, so I appreciate that. Well done. Um, but yeah, I prefer this head. I like this expression. It's got a slight, like, uptick at the, uh, at the, uh, the edge of the mouth, so it's almost like it's about to smile. Compared to this head, which is a little bit sadder, you can see that the, the mouth is kind of pointing downward in the corners. Uh, the eyebrows, I think, are similar, but I do think that they're slightly more sadder eyebrows on, on this sad head. And the, uh, yeah, but the mouth to me is all the difference. Also, lighter lip paint and all that. And then we get this head, the battle damaged head, um, which I think is great. I love the way they expose like her, her, her head, uh, her bald head, the receding hairline there. This little flop of hair hanging down, the, the dirtier wash. And then the expression on it's really cool, some nice details of the battle damage. I said three heads, there's actually technically four heads because we also have this head, which uh, I guess we'll get into right now. There are these little pieces that you can attach to it that um, there's two of them. Uh, there's this normal one. In fact, I'll just go ahead and plug this in now. So here's uh, this faceplate put onto the head, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, and then there's this other one that fits on the same way, but it's got like little like googly eyes, and there's a little more texture, a little more damage to it. I don't recall seeing this really in the movie. In the big end fight, her 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 head her face mask gets pulled off, and then very quickly this panel gets pulled off. So, uh, granted, it goes by so quick. I don't really remember it being all googly eyed though. If anyone in the comments knows if there's another scene that I don't recall where she has those googly eyes, yeah, let me know. Also, here's an accessory. She comes with a little screwdriver so you can stab her in the face just like the end of the movie. And while I'm thinking of this head which is neat that they included this head. Another little detail that I like, unlike, say, this head, which has just a normal neck, the battle-damaged one does have an exposed little green uh, section here with some little mechanical gack. That's a nice touch. That's a nice detail. It does mirror this little mechanical gack. Besides the screwdriver, those face plates, and those heads, we have a bunch of other accessories, including this hammer, uh, this nail gun, which uh, is, actually has a lot of detail to the uh, sculpt and paint, so I do think this is a pretty neat accessory. Um, we get two of the uh, paper cutter blades, a clean one and uh, a used one. And uh, I like that they included both. I think that looks awesome. Lastly, we have several hands, uh, including this right hand, which is identical to the right hand that the figure already comes with. So I feel like that's kind of pointless. Um, then we get a bunch of other right grip hands. So many right grip hands. Uh, there's this rounded one and then a slightly tighter one. We have uh, very similar looking ones. They're, they're almost like gun grip. Uh, this one's got the, the index and middle finger a little closer together. Um, this one's slightly tighter. And we have one left grip hand as well. So here she is rocking the nail gun with uh, the wider of the two kind of gun grip hands. Uh, this other one with the index finger and the middle finger kind of closer together isn't wide enough to grip the nail gun. 
Here she is with the satter head and uh, rocking the hammer. And I gotta say, it's worth pointing out that uh, because of the, the sculpt of her hair, it does really limit how much you can put her head in either direction. Here she is with the battle damage head and the uh, paper cutter blade. One thing I do want to point out is that uh, my, my elbow joints were pretty stiff. Like I can get it to move now into a swivel, but at first I thought like, do these elbow joints even swivel? That's how tight they were. But um, I do like the actual swivel. It does help get her into some uh, better poses. One extra thing that I appreciate is all the wrist joints hinge up and down, not side to side. I think that works better when it comes to like weapons on, on toys. Also, the, the range of motion at the, the shoulder isn't something I've really played a whole lot with, but I do appreciate that the, that the shoulders do hinge outward quite a bit. Upward, not outward. Actually, the grip hands move up and down and the flat hands move side to side. And I think that's to get her in one particular pose. And that's this dance pose, which is kind of hard to achieve with a single knee joint. Like a double knee joint would really support getting her leg all the way back like it goes in the movie. But there is at least the, the top of the leg joint that you can get the leg to go up to about there. But great googly moogly, is it impossible to get this figure to hold this pose? And that's just because of the balance. Like even if you get this figure to lean forward against the wall, there's just too much weight going to the left. And if you throw the balance off to the right, then it doesn't really look like the dance pose anymore. And even tipping it over to the right, there just isn't a sweet spot that I can find to do that. And here's the figure with the face skin removed, which is uh, nice that NECA included that. It's not something that I'm gonna be displaying this figure with, uh, just cause it's just not really like an iconic look for me. Like, it, but it is a nice detail that if you're really into the movie, this is a fun accessory that they've included. It really rounds out all the accessories and it is, you know, detailed in a very nice touch. For my money, this is the best head included. But if I had to like nitpick, there are two other heads that I kind of wish they would have included because I find this head and the slightly sad head to be very similar. I kind of wish that there was uh, kind of this angrier portrait, but not battle damaged because I really like the furrowed eyebrows. I really like the kind of angry lips that are uh, exposing the teeth a little bit. I think that's a really, really great expression. I just wish we had a clean one of it because that'd be kind of fun with her kind of rocking the, uh, the little paper cutter blades. Another head that I wish they would included was just kind of a neutral head, like a neutral expression where it's not frowning and it's, and it's not totally kind of got the little smile in the corner, but she kind of rocks a neutral face a lot in the movie and it's very effective. She has a very neutral expression when she's dancing in the hallway and, and, and you know, cutting people up with this, with this blade. Uh, when she first walks into the house and she takes off the sunglasses, that neutral expression is kind of haunting when she's just sitting there, like, watching you sleep. So uh, I, I think a neutral portrait would have been neat. Um, also, speaking of sunglasses, it would have been cool if we had those sunglasses because I think her walking into the house and ripping those glasses off and looking around for a second, like, that's kind of iconic. Those are nitpicks though. That doesn't make me uh, disappointed with this figure because it's a great design, it's a good sculpt, it's well painted, and it comes with plenty of accessories. So like, minor gripes. I really like this a lot. As a fan of the movie, uh, and I do enjoy the movie quite a bit, um, I, I really like what NECA did with this figure. I'm very happy they made it. They did a good job. I am satisfied as a fan. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this figure, and if you want to be up to date with all my latest reviews, be sure to click subscribe.